Time to shine today. Varsity squad, it is Scott Ferguson. And I got like someone that I consider almost like a, a friend now. I haven't known him that long. He was introduced to me by a really good friend of mine, Terry Bean, um, from the Motor City. And he said, you have to talk to Todd Cohen. He's all about leveling up mindset and behaviors and get him on the show. So I know that he will resonate with you, my squad out there. Todd has been inspiring and motivating audiences for over 12 years, teaching them to sell themselves, to achieve goals, and incredible success. Todd's sales culture, keynotes, and workshops are in demand from audiences from every background. I mean, this dude just came back from California. I mean, even during the COVID stuff, this guy's out there killing it. He includes salespeople in that, delivering approximately 85, probably closer to 90 appearances. And even with this COVID thing, he's still delivering appearances, whether it's virtually or in person. And he does about 90 little shows worldwide. Todd leaves people with a story to tell and feeling great about themselves. And he doesn't just go out there and just spill a bunch of shit. He doesn't just regurgitate. He's out there helping people level up their mindset and have a great behavior of selling. And he does it through humor and fun. And without further ado, Todd, I'm going to have you come on here, introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Oh, that's easy one. Red. Absolutely, red. positively. Since I'm a kid, red followed by blue. Red followed by blue. You know, it's funny. Yep. I'm blue followed by red. Like I have this calming blue, but that red streak comes on. It's, yep. it's time to rock. And Todd's got the red streak, but he delivers it in a way that's very unique. I borrowed a term from him. And every time you probably heard me on Berta Medina's podcast or some other podcasts out there, and I'm like, listen, I always give Todd his cred, cred, cred here, but you know, I always say it hurts so good. Like he, Todd says, give till it hurts. And I just added so good to it. So, but I got that from my man, Todd. So Todd, come on, introduce yourself, please. And give us a little bit about the origins. I know you've been doing this about 12, 13 years. What yeah, yeah, 12 years ago. Yeah, in fact, it's interesting. I, I had to remind myself it was 12 years. LinkedIn reminded me that, <laughs> uh, you know, actually LinkedIn congratulated me that, you know, it's been 12 years since I've been speaking professionally. Yeah, this goes back to 2008 when I was uh, with a job and, uh, you know, traditional position and I was running a global sales organization. And I left one day, you know, because of something they said to me that really kind of hurt my feelings you're fired. In any event, uh, you know, actually they didn't say you're fired, but it was, uh, you know, reorganization and the economy fell out. And, uh, you know, I, I really started thinking long and hard about, you know, how people are learning sales and how people um, are committing all this money to sales training for the sales team. But it's not just the sales team that sells, right? We're all in sales, which was why I wrote my first book, Everyone's in Sales. So from there, I've morphed it to keynotes and workshops and, you know, some coaching and consulting. I, I tend not to take a lot of that on. I'm extremely picky about coaching clients because you have to really, really, really want to commit to making a change. And uh, so I, I've developed, you know, this, this stuff, which is really my passion about changing the culture of a company by changing the mindset and the behavior of sales, you know, killing that stereotype of the slimy sales guy. You know, nobody wants to be that person, right? So how do we get a whole company to sell? How do we get a whole company to understand that what they do matters, that, you know, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm proud to be overhead, right? Everybody wants to know how they make a difference. Absolutely. So we can't do that until we change how people view sales. And I've changed that conversation permanently over the last 12 years for people. And yeah, I do about 90 gigs a year, give or take, you know, whatever. This year, a little different. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you have to convince yourself also? I mean, no. like, no, it was always there. Cause I mean, no, I understand no, never, that never. no matter what you're selling. No, 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 no. I, I got to tell you, not only, not only did I not have to convince myself, it's been something that's part of my DNA you know, since I was a kid, you know, when I was 13, I, I walked up and down my street. You know, I grew up outside of Pittsburgh and I walked up and down my street and I took money. And, you know, I earned from my bar mitzvah, I think it was. And uh, I bought a lawnmower and I walked up and down the street and I knocked on doors and I said, can I cut your lawn? It was, you know, a whopping three bucks plus a dollar for trimming. So it was four dollars a lawn. Okay. You know, I was rich. Love and it. It, it never I never thought twice about it until, you know, people. I started watching people over the years not achieve a goal because they were afraid to ask, because they didn't want to be salesy. They don't want to come across as pushy. 
And that's the stereotype which keeps us from doing what we've all earned the right to do and what we're doing regardless is we're all selling every day with every conversation. If you're trying to influence somebody, you're selling. If you're trying to teach somebody, you're selling. I'm selling right now because I want to influence people to think differently about what sales is and isn't. So we're all selling every day. Absolutely. Todd. So may I ask you, you like me, I was a, a paper out kid, you know, yeah. and the, the, the kid that was older than me was giving away his paper out and he was kind of a popular kid in the neighborhood. And, you know, I went to him and said, listen, man, I'll pay you five bucks a month if you give me the route, you know? Yeah. So I, I had that instilled in me as well. But when you started there, what made you go corporate? Well, my first job was with Xerox. Okay. And, uh, you know, I went to college and, you know, I came from a, you know, I come from a fairly traditional family. My father worked a, tradi a traditional position. My mother was a school teacher. So, uh, you know, it, that's what I knew, like most of us, right? Sure. You know, if my parents had both been, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or scientists or engineers, maybe I would have, well, no, I'm not nearly that smart, <laughs> but maybe I would have gone down that road. Sure. The reality of it is I went to Xerox, which was my first job. And I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to receive really what at the time arguably was the best sales training in the world. Oh, absolutely. As such. Sure. And, you know, it was just, it was more of a natural with, with my comfort level and my personality. And so you went into you know, sales like, yeah. Much oh right yeah. Away. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And, okay. And, you know, and, and as I like to point out, you know, and again, this gets back to the core theme, right? We're all in sales careers. It's just some of us do it professionally Right. And some of us are doing it every day. We just don't realize it or want to acknowledge it. But gotcha. we're all in sales careers every day. Gotcha. So, Todd, you're traveling 25% of the year or you're giving presentations 25% of the year. So 90 presentations. More. Yeah, you know, more. Or more. Yeah. Was, yeah because okay. So, you know, okay. Okay. So what do you think makes a great coach or speaker? What do you, I'm sorry, say the question. What, what do you think makes a great coach or speaker? Oh, you know, look, it's the same thing that makes a great salespeople, a salesperson, right? You have to be able to connect with people. You have to be able to empathize, empathize especially now, right? I mean, sure. and you have to really have an attitude of giving. And this is what I, I don't see enough of right now. And, and candidly, you know, this is like a Groundhog Day from 2008, 2009, 2010. It's for a different core reason. Absolutely. But it's the same thing, right? A lot of unemployment, a lot of people struggling, a lot of people trying to, you know, who are now in a position of having to go out there and say, why am I different, right? Sell themselves. Right. And so what makes a great coach or a speaker or a salesperson is you've got to be able to see through things past what it means to you. You've got to think about them first. Wow. See, three you know, things and, and, past what it means to you, squad. You hear that? That is amazing. And if you can't do that, then you might get the sale. You might get the short-term gain, but you will long-term not have the reputation that you want. Or the relationships, right? Well, they go hand in hand, right? Well, I mean, absolutely. I had to add it on, though. Come on now, brother. So yeah, if absolutely. I'm out, if I'm out pressing flesh, and which we're allowed to do here in South Florida, we have networking events pretty much every week. Um, how will I know? If someone I'm talking to is a good prospect, contact, connection, referral to talk home. Well, it's, uh, I, I, and I appreciate that. So, um, you know, if, if you're asking how there'll be a good referral for me, you know, are, are they in a position to want to change or part of a company where they, you know, they, they understand that everybody plays a role that, you know, the sales team doesn't have to do all the lifting themselves where, you know, they understand that everybody plays a role and, oh, by the way, none of us as professional salespeople can get done what we need to get done by ourselves. It's a, it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's a Rubik's cube, right? So there's not a lot of people who can look at their companies and say, yeah, we're flawless. None of us are in silos. We're all absolutely collaborating the way we need to be, right? It doesn't right. exist. Right. So, you know, that's, that's just one of the many ways that, uh, you know, that people can you know, make a referral. Love it. So when you're bringing a client in and maybe through the discovery period, if you don't mind sharing a little bit of your secret sauce with us on a, a method that you might use to help them find their blind spot. Yeah. So first of all, I, I don't, 
let me dispel a myth. I, 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 everybody's out there trying to redefine sales and say, I've got the secret or the silver bullet, or this is the latest and greatest. It doesn't exist, period. Right. At the end of the day, you know, sales is today what sales was 50 years ago and 100 years ago. Yes, thank you it, for it, saying that. It's yeah. your ability to make a connection and not make it about you. If you have verbal diarrhea, you're not going to get the sale, right? right? If you can take a moment and take a deep breath and be present and listen and ask open-ended questions, what you'll do is build a relationship. Now, if you try to take that too soon and rush it into something, then you're going to blow it. So, I, you know, I have a saying, patience is profitable right? Uh, look, I know you're, you're into real estate. And, uh, you know, one of my dear friends is a fellow named Mike McCann, who is the, who was the number one realtor for Berkshire Hathaway. Now he's, he's gone over to, I think it's Keller Williams and he's okay. one or two in the country. And I will tell you, he has relationships. He's an incredible closer. He's not afraid to ask and he doesn't take it personally. Right. right. That's the other thing. People go, I don't want to ask because I don't want to get rejected. You're not being rejected. Rejection is personal. If someone says, hey, Scott, I don't like you. Like, I'm not doing business because I don't like you personally. That's rejection. Otherwise, somebody just doesn't have enough information to make the decision at, at that point. I, I mean, we, we overthink this to death. Sure. <laughs> just be yourself and let a relationship form. And people then will want you to ask them for business. Love that. I love that. That, that is fantastic. A lot of people that I coach, and if you're listening out there, I tell you, don't take things if someone doesn't want your product or whatnot right now personally. It's, it's not a rejection of you. It's just yeah. it's not set for them right at the second. That, that, thank Timing you for saying that. Right. Timing isn't right. You know, right. don't take it personally. I love that. I love it. So Todd, when you bring in, again, we're going to kind of go back to the discovery process. When you're first starting to talk to either a CEO or even someone one-to-one, -one, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do? Yeah. How did you, how, how did you discover this passion? Because I have, a, I have great stories, right? And, you know, if you want to talk about a great way to build relationships and connect with people and create empathy and understanding and genuine heart to heart connection. Stories are the great connector and speakers were trained to build what's called a story bank, right? Sure. I have stories that right. I tell and they're real and they're genuine. They're not made up. They're not fabricated. Occasionally one is a composite, you know, it's like right. I take different pieces. Sure. And they're all true. Right. And that's the great connection point, Scott, right? I mean, right. people connect with stories because they can say, yeah, you know, I, I, I get that. I had a similar situation or, hey, I never thought about that. People connect with stories. They're the great common denominator. Love that. That's true. That's where I even start off any of my presentations, as people know, with my story because it's so unique. Yeah. Um, and then so does Todd. Todd has amazing stories. And what he didn't tell, which I should have said, you know, he's a survivor, a cancer survivor, correct, Todd? Yeah. So he's faced the adversity, you know, and whatnot. And rejection of life, in a sense, you know, <laughs> really coming at him. So Todd yeah. is an overcomer, yeah. which, which we talk about quite a bit. Hey, Todd, let's get in our DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the 23-year-old Todd. What kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on him with the wisdom and knowledge that you have right now? If you would yeah, listen. so, um, well, I'll tell you, you know, it's really funny you bring that up because a couple of days ago, I actually found my original ID badge from Xerox from 19, <laughs> none of your business, but <laughs> <your> business. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, right. And anybody who's interested can, I have a picture of it on LinkedIn, actually. And when I look at that young Todd, I'll say, well, for starters, you're going to lose your hair. So deal with it <laughs> because I had a full head of You wear it hair. well, bro. You wear yeah. it well. Yeah. Anyhow, I would say a couple of things to that guy. Don't overthink stuff. Don't overthink. Uh, I would say to him, anxiety is not useful if you are letting yourself get so anxious and not taking the steps to understand why you're anxious and deal with it. Love it. Work hard, work hard and play hard. Love it. And, Make sure that you and, play, right? Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people and, just work, so. And, you know... Boy, I'll tell you, that's a great question because I've thought a lot about this. Maybe, maybe I'll write a fourth book on that. I'm I, love, I would that. love to read that, especially with the, the, your background and your story. So yeah. 
We talk a lot about the dash here at Time to Shine today, Todd. And I want to know, and our squad wants to know, how you want your dash remembered. That little line in between your incarnation date and your exp expiration date. You know, how do you want that to be remembered? Maybe a living legacy or maybe an epitaph. How, how would you like that remembered? Two words. He cared. Love it. You do. That's too. genuinely who I am. And I know a lot of people say that. And I believe people when they say it. In fact, I believe people until they give me a reason not to believe it. So I tend to start people off with an A and they have to work to an F. A lot of people start you off at an F and you have to work up to an A. Maybe I'm too trusting, but I think at the core, most people do care. Love it. Love that, Todd. Todd, what are three things that Todd can't live without? And it could be a noun. It could be person, place, or thing. Just three things you can't live without. My wife, my dog, and, and uh, oh boy, and um, a good meal. <laughs> What's your favorite? Well, I'm a cook. I, you know, I love to oh, cook. Okay. That's my hobby. Okay. But, but uh, I'm an eggplant parmesan guy. Oh. I can eat eggplant parm seven meals a day. Probably oh. not breakfast, but I could go lunch and dinner. And yes. I make a mean eggplant parm. Love it. So you got the family, the pup, and the eggplant parm. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, Todd, what's your definition of life well lived? Well, boy, that's a, you know, I think um, that changes, right? I think okay. that changes. You know, prior to my having cancer, my definition might have been money, success, climbing the ladder, you know, reaching this sort of imagined pinnacle that society told me I had to reach, right? And I think sort of post-cancer epiphany, although I, I, I've always been more grounded than, than that, but I think it was more, you know, I'm not so concerned now about, I mean, I do very well, thank God, and, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate, but I work very hard at it, and I'm not so concerned about what the W-2 says anymore. I, you know, I, I, I really want to, like, enjoy what I do, and I love, love, love my work. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not willing to, you know, you know, make right. nothing, you know, but I, I think there, there's more of a balance, you know, there's much more of a balance right now. And I'm actually very thankful for it. Got it. Got it. As we wind things down, I'm, I'm just blown away. I got notes, people like coming out the wazoo from my <laughs> friend here, Todd, but listen, as we wind things down, Todd, we move into our leveling up lightning round and we got five or six questions, no explanation, just what off the top of your head, got five seconds to answer. You and I could talk for 20 minutes on each of them. Fire away. All right, brother. What Fire is away. the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Work hard, play hard. Love it, love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> Hell yes. Yes. Breathe. Love that. Thank you for saying that. Not the book you're reading right now, not the book you've written, not the flavor of the month, but what's that one book? That I was like, man, Todd, I need something that's going to lovely, lovely up. You'd hey, hey, Fergie, read this. What would it be? Yeah, no question about it. Emotional intelligence by the yeah. master, yeah. Daniel Goleman. Yes. Emotional, emotional intelligence is absolutely, it changed my life. And, uh, and I have to say that it may be the best sales book indirectly ever written. Yes. Yeah. Emotional intelligence is amazing. Amazing. So what's your most commonly used emoji when you text? Yeah. Thumbs up, baby. Awesome. Thumbs up. Physically, what age would you want to be if you could be it for the rest of your life? Physically. 42. Love it. Great age. Great my 42nd age. year. My 42nd year was a phenomenal year. Love it. So if you, would you be a Hollywood action star or an MVP on a sports team? Oh God, neither. Because, uh, okay. Very cool. Both, both of them are infinitely ta more talented than I. However, if you, could, uh, I wouldn't mind being, I used to do stand up comedy, so I wouldn't mind being a comedian on stage. Love it. Love that. Love it. Love it. What's your favorite uh, charity and or organization you'd like to give your time and or money to? American Cancer Society. Beautiful. Thanks for saying that. And last question. It's a little bit tougher. You might need some explanation on this one. Bring it so on. For last. But what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? No question. 70s. Yes. You definitely. We got we to gotta hang out and crush some of that eggplant parm 70s. and listen to some Seeger. Right? Yeah. Here we go. Hey, Todd, how can we find you, my friend? So thanks for asking. I've had a great time uh, with you. Uh, so let's see. You can find me, first of all, 
anybody can find anybody, right? It's, you know, sure. dial up the old Google machine, but, uh, you know, anybody can find anybody. It's uh, my website is Todd, T-O-D-D Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, ToddCohen.com. Real easy to find me. And uh, you can reach me by email at Todd at ToddCohen.com. Two D's, not one. The guy with one D is actually a photographer in Chicago. And occasionally I get his emails and <laughs> I, I'm sure he doesn't appreciate, uh, you know, my getting emails saying, hey, can I order four by seven proofs or something like that? Right, so right. <laughs> but it's two D's, just like the logo right there behind you. Just like, wait a minute, hold on. There like is. the weather report, just there like on the books right here. <laughs> I love that. And, and speaking of the books, folks, um, uh, when this episode drops, I'm going to have you go to the Time to Shine Today Facebook page. And the first one that leaves a comment, like I do with a lot of my guests, I'm going to personally purchase the book, mail it to Todd. Todd's going to sign it to you. And then um, he'll bill me for the, for the, the postage. So Sounds yeah. good. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll, you do one and I'll do one for the second comment. How about oh, that? Beautiful, beautiful. So that's two books. And you can, uh, which one, which book do we want to do? One of each? Everyone's I'm going to do both. Okay, I'm going to do both. Everyone's, see, I got to get used to this. You know, I'm still, yeah, I still love that, man. The, yeah, you know, the fun's is, coming in. So I'll do another one. Stop sale. apologizing. Start selling, yeah, stop, right? And stop, stop apologizing and start selling, which I think is, is so needed for what we're in right now in this pandemic, because people need to, they need to step it up with their yeah, confidence and, and get out there and ask for stuff. I love it. And Todd, leave us the time to shine today squad with, one last knowledge nugget you want us to take with us, internalize, and put into action. Yeah, nobody wakes up in the morning. Nobody on this call wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be overhead, right? No matter what role you are in in a company, what you do has a systemic impact on a customer or a colleague or your boss ultimately saying yes to what it is you need. So recognize that that is a sales motion get rid of the stereotype of sales and understand that you're selling whether you want to whether you want to believe it or not so embrace it and understand again there's a stereotype that hey don't be that guy i don't like that guy either you're selling simply by showing up and being present love that and todd just reminded us squad uh, fantastic, just fantastic interview. He, he reminds us, don't be overhead. Remember what you do matters and that you're always selling. So might as well be powerful in that situation. He reminds us to get your asking gear, ask for help where needed. He wants yeah, you to absolutely. connect, empathize, and have an ap 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 attitude of giving. He wants you to see through past what it means to you while you are talking to people and starting to bring them in to your company. Remember that patience is profitable. Okay. Don't take things personally. It's not a rejection. When somebody rejects your sale, they're not rejecting you. There's the timing is what matters. So make sure you follow through and follow up with the people, you know, ask your coach. If you, if you have a coach now, maybe ask them, how did you discover your passion? And if you don't have a coach, get with me. I'm going to get you with Todd and he can, you know, he can, add, you can ask him that question. Don't mm -hmm. overthink. Todd wants to be remembered as a man who cared. He wants you to work hard and play hard. And again, don't be overhead. Todd, I'm blessed to have you on. You're legendary. You're humble. You're healthy. You're leveling up your health, leveling up your wealth. You're part of our squad now. Thank you so, so much for coming on, brother. Thanks. Appreciate the invitation. Love doing it. Thanks, Todd. Bye now.